Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, depending on where you are in the world today and what time zone you're in. Today's webinar is on female traveller safety awareness. My name is Erica and I am the operations manager here at Maiden Voyage and I'm going to be delivering this pre-recorded webinar for you on female traveller safety awareness. In particular, this is for admin chat today. If you've got any questions following this time when you've listened to it, please do email me at erica at maiden-voyage.com. Of course, have a look on our website to find out more about us or if you wish to become a member, um, you're welcome to do so, which is free. And we can be contacted on 0113 314 9000. If I can just draw your attention to say that these slides are copyright and do remain the property of Maiden Voyage. If you do wish to use any of the material, please just simply get in touch with us and we can authorise that for you. So I'm just going to run through what I'm going to cover in today's session. I'm going to give you a quick introduction to Maiden Voyage about who we are and what we do. We're going to talk about why gender specific, particularly in the 21st century. And then I'm going to give you a few top tips. We're going to have some statistics and um, some case studies, a couple of videos in there for you to watch around cultural differences. We're going to talk about planning trips, a bit about medical, hotel safety, safer local travel, and then I'm going to um, recap for you. So who's Maiden Voyage? We are ultimately a global solutions provider to help organisations safeguard their female business travellers. You'll probably be aware that employers have a duty of care obligation to their staff who travel on business. And that applies whether or not that travel is domestic or international. And organisations that fail to provide that gender specific travel advice are inadvertently risk, do inadvertently risk breaching their duty of care requirements. So we help organisations do that. We also work with individuals to help educate them too. I'm going to share with you a bit more about that next. So we're a network that allow women to meet up whilst travelling on business. Maiden Voyage has been around since 2008 when our founder, Carolyn Pearson, founded the site after her herself spending one too many lonely nights in a hotel room eating room service, something that I think we all um, do. She wanted to be able to connect up with other women who were travelling on business with the opportunity to get out and see more of the city that they were travelling to. And with her background in technology, she made Maiden Voyage happen. And today we've got over 12,000 women in over 100 countries using our platform, which helps them have a safer and more social business trip. Our work is supported by a wonderful group of global ambassadors that we've got in over 80 cities around the world. Our local ambassadors can advise on loads of interesting facts, such as the local business etiquette, business dress code. They can share with you their own little black books of the best resources for women in that city. If you indeed love your city and you'd like to become an ambassador, um, please do look into this. We'd love to hear from you. We generally focus on key business city locations and we're always looking to boost that area to help other um, female travellers. So I've got a bit of a job description on the page for you now. And like I say, we've got our locations worldwide. Some of the perks that you can see there, so you get to um, inspect some of our hotels. Sometimes that includes a free stay, which is really cool. Um, you get to promote your profile or organisation to over 12,000 of our community. And it allows you connect to connect with others. And sometimes there are opportunities to represent Carolyn and us at interesting events that we do as well. On our website, we've got a number of travel safety tips. So if you're interested in traveling safely, which I'm assuming that you are, given that you're on this webinar, you can have a look on our website. We also have a number of female friendly hotels, which we have, which means that they've been um, certified um, and they've been inspected. Our inspections um, are online that people do for us um, and we do ourselves. Um, we've also just reached um, launched our partnership with Capita Travel and Events and they are working with us to expand on the number of hotels that we have available that meet the criteria. The criteria are um, security and safety led followed by comfort and the criteria has been decided from our community as, as to what's important with, for them. 
So a hotel would not pass, for example, if they didn't have um, two independent locks um, and being in a low risk location, have a 24 seven manned reception and a well lit entrance. They are mandatory criteria. So we're, we have a specialist female focus, as I mentioned earlier, and in addition to what all we do for all of you as individual travellers, we also, also offer travel wellbeing webinars, a corporate network, e-learning and classroom training to educate female travellers about um, risks, how to mitigate those risks and how to overcome situations. Our travel wellbeing webinars, well, we launched that in January. Um, it's been going extremely well. The first one that we did was on travel well-being, and we just held one back in April, on the 19th of April, on navigating international cultures, which was really, really interesting because it's just unbelievable the difference of the, all the different cultures, even between the UK and France and Italy, for example, right through to the more extreme, of, like the likes of Saudi and UAE areas. Each webinar is delivered by leading experts and lasts just an hour. It gives really good practical tips for you to take back and put into practice. So if you want more information on those, again, please do just email me. We have corporate membership. So we work with a number of corporate organisations. And um, part of that is that we do a full travel policy review to make sure that they're accurate and inclusive for female travellers and the LGBTQ community. The corporate company itself will get access to a very inclusive um, hotel inspection database. Um, and what that means is that that can then be open to you as uh, travellers, so you know that you can make a choice between um, what hotels are available. And then you can say, right, well, I would prefer to stay in that one because that's been certified as female friendly, because you know then that it meets that criteria. Um, the company would also get access to the quarterly travel, -y, travel wellbeing webinars, which I just mentioned for free of charge, which is usually a chargeable webinar. And they will get an exclusive code which will enable members to be able to network with other colleagues and of course when an organization does that bit extra that really helps with staff attraction and retention our classroom training is delivered at your premises for up to 12 people it's a full day feedback is consistently at 98 percent excellent and is delivered worldwide to all sectors of clients so you can see on there what the different um, areas are that we cover um, what's really good is the self-defence areas as well as everything else and we often we always find that we get a lot of disclosure in those which quite often um, companies may not even know incidences that happen. But on the back of that um, we created our e-learning because the feedback was well these, this is great but how do we reach the masses? So we took um, the feedback from our clients um, and we created the top five modules from the classroom training made them into bite-sized 20-minute interactive modules that can be taken anywhere in the world and at the convenience of the traveller. The modules were written by leading experts and fully tested by critical focus groups to ensure that they were suitable for the experienced right through to the less experienced travellers. They've been written in clear language so it's suitable for those with English as a second language and the company can track who has done the training for audit purposes too. So you can see there what the modules are, it's hotel safety, intercultural awareness, pre-planning and packing, safe ground transportation and safe meetings and leisure time. And today we're going to be using some of the content that we use in our training. Here's some of the sectors that we work with, so a complete variety of different sectors. We've also just started working in the Premier Ship Football Arena as well, which is really great and um, very diverse. And we're also really proud to have been featured in the press worldwide. So before we start, I'm going to address the possible elephant in the room. Why on earth in the 21st century do we need to offer gender specific advice when we should be living in an equal society, right? Well, not so true. So there are lots of things to consider. You've got to consider legal and cultural restrictions in some countries. So, for example, whilst this check is changing now, but women may not be allowed to drive or even um, enter a country without a chaperone. There are cultural restrictions, so is it okay to shake a hand with a male colleague, for example, or extending eye contact might put us inadvertently at risk. 
We are statistically more prone to assault, whether or not that be physical, verbal or sexual. And sometimes, not all the time, obviously, we can be less physical strong, making us therefore more of a target. Our handbags, I don't know about you, but I pretty much carry my, my life around in my handbag. The contents of my handbag is very high um, and therefore making it a very attractive um, theft target. And of course, um, you've got the health implications in pregnancy to consider, particularly around Zika when traveling. Not all risks um, lead to danger. Um, so it's worth bearing that in mind. And the good news is that most of us, although not wishing to stereotype, obviously, do have a good sense of awareness. And we're constantly in our guard when traveling, thinking, planning ahead because of safety concerns. So the purpose of this session is to inform, empower and liberate you to have a safe and positive travel experience. And also what you learn, you can also share with your colleagues and pass that on. So it's worth remembering that whilst the risk of you becoming a victim is very slim, the impact of something happening could be extremely serious and life changing. So therefore, I want to be able to prepare you to um, about what those risks are and mitigate some of those risks and help you avoid potential incidents. One of my favourite sayings is you don't know what you don't know. And also complacency is anyone's biggest enemy. So we did some research. It's called the Women in Business Travel Report. You can get a copy of this from me if you want to email me. Again, my email is erica at maiden-voyage.com and I can provide you with that. I want to share with you some stats from that. So 24% of women have suffered a negative incident whilst traveling on business. This may be, I think it's probably higher than this. I've done a couple of webinars um, that I did for International Women's Day in um, 2018. And 42% of women on that webinar had said that they'd experienced a negative incident whilst traveling on business. So um, I think 24% might be quite conservative. So, uh, but even still, that's one in four. 79% of female business travelers claim that they're underprepared to deal with an incident that they encounter. And that's why this education around e-learning or the classroom training is just so important. Again, it goes back to what you say, what I say, you don't know what you don't know. So, you know, let's prepare travellers for what the risks are and let's help mitigate and reduce those risks are there to them. 70% believe that travel supplies should try harder to address the needs of female business travellers. And 31% of female business travellers didn't feel that their employers adequately looked after them when they're travelling on business, which is quite scary that they feel that way. Those incidences that we're referring to, some of them happened in countries that you may think, well, I can understand why that would happen there. You know, it's probably a bit more expected. Um, however, they also happened in the likes of Southampton, Dublin and Zurich, which were probably considered as safer regions, and safer countries. Women also felt vulnerable um, in the hotel, 51% while staying in a hotel, 55% in a cab. 67% on public transport, 67% walking alone in a new city. And of course, there's the other thing to remember is about dining out alone. And that's why a lot of women end up having room service in their bedrooms night after night because they don't feel comfortable with that. So let's talk about some pre-planning. I'm going to give you some top tips now. There's so much more to cover than what I've got time to go through. So like I mentioned, Feel free to get in touch. I'd love to have a chat with you, you know, whether or not it's just for a bit of advice or, you know, just want to have a chat about what your company does and how you can improve. So I'm going to um, go through a few bits now. So I personally absolutely love, love, love lists. And um, I know a lot of you probably will do too. Um, so don't leave things to chance. Um, and write lists of things that you need, whether or not it's going on holiday or going away on business. Here's the latest travel risk map from uh, the International SOS. It's always worth having a look on their website. It highlights the current danger hotspots. But remember, now it's particularly nowadays, you can be at risk anywhere and complacency is your biggest enemy, but always worth looking into that. Just be aware, however, of generic advice and think about your own personal risk profile. You know, how experienced a traveler are you, for example? Think about your own personal circumstances and what you're going to be doing on your trip. So every single um, trip um, is going to be um, different. 
Make sure you do your destination research. So there are lots of things to consider, like what the social and economic conditions are like. Is there a high crime rate? Are there any anniversaries or protests that are due? Are there any religious issues or conflicts? Thinking about, you know, kidnap, what the kidnap um, risk is like in the area. Is a history of disease where you're going? Think about weather conditions. Are you going to an earthquake zone? So loads of things to consider before traveling. It's always worth having more than one copy of some of the documents. So think about worst case scenario. So if you plan for the worst, hope for the best, and you, you're pretty much safe. So if your passport was stolen or you lost your passport, what would you do? So you might be stuck in the country, for example, but it would make life a lot easier for you if you could gain a copy of your passport and other important documentation. So perhaps you want to consider taking a copy of your passport um, and uploading it into the cloud, keeping a copy with um, perhaps your work, if you feel comfortable doing so, or with a partner, um, and then you can easily get access to them. Think about your phone and emergency contacts as well. So I know we're all time poor, but it's really important to get through to your phone companies to let them know that you're going traveling and so your phone can be activated for roaming. I know a lot of companies now you don't need to do that, but it's always worth just checking. We'd also always advise carrying a card with numbers written on as a backup. So again, thinking about if you lost your phone, I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't remember any of my family's numbers. I don't, yeah, I, I really genuinely don't. So you've got to think, you know, if you've got yourself in trouble, how would you get in touch with people? So have a copy um, of key numbers written down um, on a little card that you can keep safe and separate to your phone. And it sounds obvious, but obviously keep your phone charged and um, it's always worth keeping a power bank with you. Here's some of the key numbers that I'd advise keeping a note of. So your medical insurance, travel insurance, obviously your office address, hotel number. If you use a company such as International SOS, then keep their number. So you've got third party assistance and emergency evacuation should you need that and of course things like your employer travel manager embassies and a contact at home so a bit about luggage obvious signs of wealth in less affluent societies could make you a target for theft so just remember that your luggage says a lot about you um, that could be whether or not you're having your luggage stolen or belonging stolen from your luggage in transit or your handbag snatch so seriously consider leaving a louis vuitton suitcase or your designer handbag at home when you're traveling obviously besides the inconvenience of losing belongings travel documents cash credit cards it really could leave you without means of communication and seriously disrupt your travel plans so remember not to have your home address visible on your luggage just have your name and telephone number um, that may indicate to other people if you did have your full address and think that your house and property may be left unoccupied, making you a possible risk for um, a burglary. And make sure you have your contact details inside the suitcase, just in case um, it gets ripped off um, and someone, try, someone does find your suitcase. Have a visible lock and padlock. This will deter thieves looking for an easy target. And for the States, you will need to have a TSA lock. Have a visible but not feminine luggage strap so you can identify your luggage easily. And just remember that bag theft is prevalent on trains, so make sure that you keep your bag visible. I always have it above my head or in between the two back-to-back -back seats or even under your seat, but just make sure that you can keep an eye on it. You could also take a bag with a cross strap, um, so it makes it a lot easier to um, carry around with you. And um, it's, it can be in some countries quite common for thieves to um, slip the handbag and so items fall out rather than snatching it off you so just be aware of that as well. I personally really struggle with packing I seem to have more shoes than the number of days that I'm traveling but um, again this is why it's so important for me personally to keep a list um, I definitely keep a packing list um, so and that will just in all seriousness so it will help you not overpack. Packing light keeps you agile, mobile, bit more efficient and it of course can be cheaper and um, particularly if you just carry on hand luggage and with some thought you can get many outfits out of just a few pieces so 
you know, rolling pieces together can help prevent creasing and enable you to fit a bit more in. Pack clothes that enable you to look like a local and just to blend in. And you may want to avoid obvious signs of your nationality, for example, a university sweatshirt. Find out what the local business dress code is so you can be sensitive to the, their local um, culture and particularly in respect to modesty. So you may need to invest in an abeya or a headscarf, for example. Other things to consider, depending on where you're travelling to, is that you may, may feel more comfortable wearing a fake wedding ring in countries such as Egypt. You may want to avoid trousers in Israel. Take a pashmina for covering up in sacred buildings. Remember that feminine hygiene products may not be readily available in some countries as well. So something you may not necessarily um, consider and think about, but also definitely worth remembering. Taking flat shoes for mobility between meetings or walking backwards and forwards to your hotel uh, might make you a bit more stable and be more comfortable. But of course, if worst came to the worst and your handbag was stolen or, or anything else, then at least you should actually be able to run and you'd be more stable. Leave your expensive watches and jewellery at home, particularly in Latin America. Um, likewise, we've had a members reporting having necklaces ripped off their, their um, neck in Paris and other destinations. And as I mentioned before, remember to have your mobile charger and with you so you've got an emergency um, backup power supply. Laptops are also one of the most commonly stolen items, so try and carry your laptop in an innocuous bag and keep a pre-packed toiletry bag with you with your miniatures in there if you're travelling with hand baggage only, so under 100 mil. Um, and remember, you need those um, transparent uh, sealable bags as well. Here are some useful resources for you to review before you travel as well, so um, definitely go and have a look on some of these websites. Um, Foreign Office, Lonely Planet's really good. We've got all of the ambassadors that you can have a look on the website as well. Um, and of course, you can get some advice from your travel risk manager or supplier too. So cultural differences, massive subjects. And obviously, again, we can't cover it completely. But I think I'm good to start off with. I'm going to show you a short video. In an age where many nations recognise or strive to recognise sexual equality, it's important to acknowledge that attitudes towards women can differ dramatically from country to country. Culture, the legal system and sometimes the religion may influence or dictate how women are treated around the world. A misunderstanding of these differences could lead to awkward, offensive or even dangerous situations arising out of an innocent mistake. The most important lesson in this module is for you to fully research your destination, for stereotypes can often be misleading. Therefore, for every example, there will always be an exception. Being fully alert to your surroundings and observing how the local population interacts will help you to fit in and not draw unwanted attention to yourself. So that's just a, one of the videos that we have in our e-learning, uh, just to give you a, you know, a bit of an introduction to um, cultural awareness. And then, of course, the other things to consider, there are limitations of generic advice. So, for example, you know, if you're carrying a women's magazine, you might have a woman on the front cover that, I don't know, might be wearing a bikini or something that's not very much. And um, that could be considered and construed in some countries as being pornographic. It can also be frowned upon about wearing bright lipstick. Initiating a handshake may not be acceptable in some countries and could, of course, inadvertently mean that you don't get that business piece of business as a result of that. It can be seen as very rude, even though perfectly acceptable and expected here in the UK. Eye contact and smiling could give off different messages depending on what country you're in. Should you wear trousers? Is it okay to wear a short skirt? Showing different parts of the body, so are you allowed to wait and show your shoulders, for example? Sitting in front of cabs in some countries is not allowed as a woman. Reporting a sexual attack um, is very different depending on what country that you're in, and I'm going to talk about that with you in a moment. And eating out in a restaurant as well, if, particularly if you're a lone female traveller or with a, with a man. 
So here's just a few fun facts for you. Did you know that it's illegal to chew gum in Singapore? It's illegal to step on money in Thailand, so no dropping the pennies over there. Um, it's illegal to run out of fuel in Germany. Um, you shouldn't offer a green hat as a gift for somebody in China. It's really offensive. And high heels are banned at religious sites in Greece. So um, just a few weird facts for you there. I mentioned earlier about reporting sexual attacks. I'm going to share a short video animation with you now. Um, it's on sexual assault um, and it's got real life examples and things to consider. Should God forbid, should anything like that happen to you? So perhaps a few things there that may have shocked you, but makes you realise of the, the, the amount of things that you need to consider. So LGBTQ plus, um, we also need to consider um, where the gay community are travelling to. Um, here um, is a list, of, sorry, a map of the sexual orientation laws in the world. It's from a website called ILGA.org. Definitely worth looking at. Um, and it will highlight on there where homosexuality is criminalised. It's actually um, a criminal offence in 76 nations, and that's um, defined by consens consensual sexual acts between persons of the same sex in private and over the age of consent. So um, even if you're doing something in private, not harming anyone, it is still criminalised in 76 nations. And it has a death penalty in several nations as well. So um, it's definitely worth considering. Obviously, it's up to the individual if they are out and let you know their sexuality. They don't have to do that. However, it's extremely important that if, um, well, for everybody, it, they are very clear that what the legislation is in that area, but also how it's construed. So even in... Um, in America, there was a report that come out by Twitter to say that there's a lot of um, hate um, tweets about um, the gay community, particularly around in Buffalo. So even though it's not um, illegal, it's certainly still very frowned upon. So it's definitely worth understanding what the views are and the laws are in countries for the gay community. Medical and pregnancy considerations. So ensure that um, before you leave, um, think about the medical aspects of your trip, whether or not that's for you or for, or you arranging it for somebody else. So ensure that before that you leave, that you've checked the health requirements for the area, such as relevant immunisations. Your foreign office should be able to advise you on that. Ensure that any medication that you may be on um, or your traveller needs to take is not on the banned substance list in the country that it's being travelled to. For example, here in the UK, um, cough medicines and painkillers and relaxing ingredients are all OK, but may be illegal in some other countries. So again, check with the FCO, the Foreign Commonwealth Office, or the local embassy. 
Before you travel with medications, ensure that um, you've got enough for your whole stay and probably an extra supply in case you've got delays or any emergencies. It's worth get, getting a letter from your doctor to say that you need the medication and keep a list in case you lose it or you need to get more during your stay. Make a list of the correct names of the medication, not just the trade names. And keep the medication in its original packaging or bottles just so they don't think you're trying to smuggle um, illegal drugs into the country. Keep a written record with you of any medical conditions affecting you. That could be anything from diabetes um, or haemophilia, for example, and include your blood group in this. And of course, if you suffer from anaphylactic shocks, then make sure that you wear a medical SOS bracelet. And pack your medicines in your hand luggage just in the event that your bags do go missing in transit. If you're going to be in a country for more than three months, then you may need to apply for a personal export license if the drugs are listed on the Misuse of Drugs Regulation Act of 2001. So medical pre-planning. Do check before you travel the status of the local health facilities in the area that's being travelled to. Many countries do not have the same facilities that you're used to at home. So think about what you would do in the event of an injury or an illness. Other commercial organisations provide expert emergency assistance and it would be best to check if your business has an agreement with one of those operators, such as an international SOS, for example. Find out in advance if the water is safe to drink and take normal precautions to avoid stomach upsets. If in doubt, avoid salads and ice and only drink bottled water. And carry a selection of your basic medications with you when, you tra when traveling that's appropriate for the destination. For example, you may choose to take a remedy for stomach upsets. The website that we advise you looking at is fitfortravel.nhs.uk. Um, definitely worth having a knock on that website. So I'm going to touch on pregnancy. I'm sure many of you can relate to the peri perils of um, travel and pregnancy, whether or not it's business travel or personal travel. It's got its own set of implications in itself. And for a whole manner of reasons, a female employee may not wish to declare her pregnancy earlier on, which is absolutely fine. And, and someone who is pregnant will usually need to consider a separate kind of risk assessment. So there are a lot of issues at stake. For example, is it the first child? in which case, of course, there's no pregnancy history or, for example, have there been complications with previous pregnancies? Everyone's got different medical backgrounds. Some won't want to travel. Others won't want pregnancy to be seen as an interference in their plans and careers. So everyone is individual. In many cases, a woman could find herself suffering from morning sickness as well, which may make traveling unrealistic, particularly if it's earlier on. And she may not be able to share with colleagues while she's suffering as well. The first three months and the last three months are riskier um, and some women may not wish to travel in the final trimester. Some travel vaccinations may also be off limits during pregnancy. And uh, the pregnant person may wish to speak to the occupational health or travel department or a trusted HR member to potentially invent another reason why they're unable to travel just until they're happy to reveal their pregnancy. And some airlines will refuse to accept a pregnant passenger over 27 weeks without a GP certificate. Likewise, a travel insurer may also need the assurance of a doctor's certificate that a pregnant woman is also safe to travel. So you'll need to understand if the areas you're traveling to has adequate medical services as well. And if you do travel during pregnancy, then it's important to stay hydrated and to wear your seatbelt low down. And of course, whether you're pregnant or not, Avoid the usual risks for um, deep vein thrombosis by wearing the socks and getting up and moving, etc. So I'm going to move on now to hotel safety, my favourite subject. So I can probably talk on this for an hour alone. We know from our research that some women have had negative experiences in hotels. And as I mentioned earlier, 51% of women feel vulnerable while staying in a hotel. Um, I'm going to show you... Um, Another short video, again, taken from our e-learning, and this is a short video of incidents that have happened.
So again, quite shocking, and a number of those incidences could have been avoided um, should they have been using, um, had, should they have had a double locking door or use a device such as a door jammer, which I'll explain to you later, but quite shocking. And there are a number of occasions that, where we know that hotels um, double allocate rooms, and so um, you get disturbed by somebody. It's completely innocent, but of course it makes you feel really uncomfortable for the rest of your stay. It's happened once, it could happen again. So when it comes to hotel safety, think of the things that you can do for yourself or the traveller that you might be booking travel for. So researching the hotel location, you may use um, a travel management company, then that's absolutely fine. But you yourself can do the research and make sure that the, the location is um, in what you'd consider a safe area. You can book a female friendly hotel, which I mentioned earlier, you can see some of those on the website. Or if you're a company whereby you're a corporate member, you will have access to the comprehensive feed of all female friendly certified, um, so all hotels that have passed the criteria. Make sure that the rooms booked are between the first and sixth floor. So it's worth think, remembering that, hotel, um, that fire engine ladders are not long enough to go past the sixth floor. And we don't advise anyone staying on the ground floor because it's just more accessible to, to the general public. If your room number is announced out loud, ask for a new room. Remember that the hotel lobby is a public area. If there is anybody with ill intentions, that's where they'll be. Um, and it has been known where um, lone female travellers have been followed to their rooms. When you arrive in the room, check that locks and phones work and that windows and doors are secure. Keep your room locked at all times, using a door jammer if needed. Use your signage outside the room. So just put the sign out to say, do not disturb, because that indicates it says probably somebody in the room. Likewise, if you put, please make up my room, that indicates that your room is highly likely to be empty. Using the spy hole to check, obviously check before you open the door to anybody. Consider the necessity of taking handbags down for breakfast. High, high um, time of the day to have things stolen is when a lone traveller leaves a bag or a laptop bag or whatever it might be on the table or on the chair to save the table that they're sitting at whilst they go up to the buffet and know what to do um, and how to deal with a loss of the room key. So it's just about minimising your risk and these are some of the things that you can do. So I mentioned about double locking doors. The image on the left is what I mean by double locking door. Um, it's either one of those um, locks that you can see at the top of the image there or a lock and chain. So it can't be overridden by a um, hotel card. If your hotel doesn't have those, it doesn't mean to say you're going to have an unsafe stay, but you might just want to go um, a bit more prepared and take a device such as a door jammer, which you can see on the right. It's about the height of an iPhone, uh, really lightweight, you can carry it around in your handbag. And um, yeah, it just gives you that added security. I know friends of mine that have gone and not felt secure where they were staying and have ended up having to put a chest of drawers behind their doors and things like that. So this would obviously prevent that. It's worth knowing as well that on our website you can get a door jammer and um, there's 20% discount which we've negotiated for um, all of our communities. So if you are interested in getting one, do have a look on the shop page of our website. Remember that if anyone's not happy with where you're staying, feed it back to the company or travel management company so they don't put other lone female travellers in there. So I'm going to cover a bit on transport safety now. And we're going to talk about airport meet and greet. So I'm going to give you a real life example here. A woman that was working for a large, well-known company arrived in Brazil. She got into the car of a driver who met her at the airport with a nameplate. He wasn't her official driver and instead he kidnapped her for ransom. When she was eventually released, that woman was too traumatised to go back to the company. And aside from all of the mental scars she'll continue to wear, they had the company, of course, had the potential reputational damage to deal with, as well as the costs for replacing and onboarding a new member of staff. So there are some practical measures that you can take to reduce your risk here. You can make sure that someone, that the person that meets you from the airport, you know, and you've got someone that's a reputable driver, so that um, your organisation can book that for you. Have their mobile phone number in your phone in advance of your trip and that saves time once you get off the plane and into the baggage area and you can call them and ask them to identify themselves to you and of course then when you go through you can also ask to look at their phone 
You may also wish to have a password, which they can identify with you as well. And of course, make sure that you avoid going off with just any old taxi driver, particularly in higher risk countries. Road traffic accidents represent the biggest risk to you when you're traveling on business. Therefore, it's essential that you pay attention to the roadworthiness of both the vehicle and the driver and look for things such as working seat belts. It's also think about um, if you've got um, a safe taxi, ask your hotel for assistance. Think about tipping etiquette as well. And of course, consider language barriers. So it's all very well and good having your tax as uh, your hotel written down in English. But if you're in a country whereby English isn't spoken a lot, then you might end up getting yourself stuck. And of course, think about Uber. Um, Uber's got different safety records um, and they vary from country to country. So just be aware of that. And just obviously make sure you've got enough local currency to cover the fare um, and tips should you need to do that. It's also worth remembering not to um, flash any cash when you're out on the street, so pay whilst you're in the taxi. Um, so keep your luggage with you in the taxi if it's possible. Um, if your luggage is in the boot of the car, then don't leave the cab before the driver gets out. Um, it has been known for taxi drivers to drive off once you've got out of the car and being left with no luggage. As I just mentioned, make sure you've got enough currency to pay the taxi driver. Never share a cab with a stranger. Sounds obvious, but it does happen. Be very cautious about discussing personal details or business matters during the journey. You never know who's listening or what, the, you know, what they're there for. Um, so just always think about that. And also plan about how you'll get out of a cab in an emergency. So I'm going to give you another example now. As a lady that we know, know of was, um, was told to source and take a local taxi from Vienna to Bratislava. And that was in order to get a cheaper flight back. The flights were cheaper from Bratislava than they were from Vienna. The driver robbed her, dumped her at the border. She was circled and chased by four men. She managed to escape, luckily. The police refused to help her and she felt that her only course of action was to get a lift from an unlicensed cab whose driver looked unfit to drive. She was absolutely desperate. Don't let that happen to you. Other forms of transport. Public transport systems vary from country to country. Generally, um, you know, so it's worth looking into. Find out um, from the local embassy or your office what the safety record is for the local transport, for example, buses and trains. Are they massively overcrowded? Is there an issue with pickpockets, for example? Think about the local airlines in the country. If you've got to travel to another destination within the country that you're staying in with them and what's the safest way of doing this and check out local airlines that are banned from operating within the EU. It's generally a good gauge of how safe they are likely to be. I'll give you another example. So we're frequently contacted by women who are nervous about the travel plans proposed by their employers. Um, this particular woman, she worked in academia. She was asked to take the sleeper train through the middle of India. She contacted us because she was quite rightly so nervous. And we contact, contacted our local ambassador, who in turn strongly advised against her doing this, as something was highly likely to happen to her. The matter was made even worse when she was subsequently told that the male business associate she was meeting was going to be sleeping in the same sleeper carriage as her, so they thought that she would be okay. Um, anyway, the lady concerned, she stood her ground and insisted on, on an alternative arrangement being made. It's also um, worth um, doing a bit of investigation into sexual assaults, mid-air sexual assaults. Um, the FBI investigations into mid-air sexual assaults have increased by 66% from fiscal year 2014 to 2017. And there are a number of examples out there where sexual assault has happened. And generally, air, um, air, air stewards um, don't know how to deal with it, so um, and don't particularly deal with it very well. So definitely um, do your research into that. Trust your instincts as well um, when it comes into play. Um, 
but also there's something that you can, um, a number that you can use here in the UK, 61016 is the British Transport Police. So it's worth just documenting that, putting that into your mobile phone, and then you can um, report something discreetly should you feel uncomfortable um, whilst you're travelling. So on your arrival to the hotel, consider how you're going to get to the hotel, your place of work once you've arrived. Schedule your trips so that you arrive in daylight hours. Insist upon a driver to meet and ID him. Um, if not, how on earth do you expect to travel safely and comfortably? Have the destination written in the local language, as I mentioned before, and that will really help you converse with the drivers. Think about this ahead of the trip rather than arriving, maybe jet lagged or tired from a long trip when your senses, your intuition may just be at a bit of a lower ebb than usual. So let's do a recap now. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. You know, here's some really good um, quotes on here. Complacency is your biggest enemy. Your health is your wealth. So, um, you know, just remember that. Make sure you really do think about your health. Um, you, you only live once and make sure you live healthily. Um, you know, there's a lot of other things that we cover within the training. There's so much more. All of those um, modules that you saw on the classroom training list. Um, but obviously, I'm under limited time today. So um, this is the end of the webinar. Um, I hope you've educated you, I've informed you, and I've empowered you on how to mitigate risks and have a safer business trip for you and your colleagues. I'd like you to just have a think about what you're going to do differently as a result of what you may have picked up today. So think about what you're always going to do, and then also think about what you're never going to do again. And of course, we'd love to hear from you. As I mentioned, you know, a friendly bunch here. We love having a chat. We love advising. And if you've got any questions um, or you want to discuss anything further or just indeed connecting with us on Twitter, LinkedIn, you can join as an individual member through our website and you can join up to our newsletter. You also at the moment get a downloadable um, ebook. Um, which is downloadable and it's got checklists and all sorts in there. It's really fantastic. And I think that's available for the next couple of weeks. So I believe until about the 20th of May 2018. So you can have a look at that and download that through our website as well. My email address is erica at mates-voyage.com. And I would like to say a big thank you to you for investing this time in yourself. And um, I genuinely wish you um, and your colleagues safe travels and like I say please do get in touch if you've got any questions at all we want to find out more about our products and services thank you so much for your time <laughs>